Well, hello and welcome. I'm Katie and this is a Fountain Pen Awakening. And today I thought that I would jump on the bandwagon and answer the eight pen questions. This has been all the rage in the Fountain Pen community and um, initiated by Leanne Likes and Simone or Simona. And uh, they have these eight questions about the Fountain Pen journey. And so I thought I would do it too. Let's get started. <music> So first things first, grab yourself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or your beverage of choice. I'm having a green tea today. And um, how are you all doing? I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're doing super well. I'm great. In Queensland today, we had like weird weather, like with sun coming and going. I did hear some thunder in the background uh, before but it's kind of stopped now um, so if you see my lighting change it's because the sun keeps on coming and going um, behind the clouds I'm also filming outside so obviously if you hear any kind of like weird noises you know like birds and traffic and neighbors that's why <laughs> alrighty so just to let you know, I did recently do my six month anniversary video, which does cover a bit of um, of these questions, and and I go in a little bit in more depth about my journey so far. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll link it at the end of this video. So the first question here is when and how did your fountain pen journey begin? My fountain pen journey began uh, last year at the start of August 2022 and I went from zero to a hundred like that. I was hooked and I wanted to buy every single Lamy Safari, then I wanted to buy every single All Star um, and yeah and then I wanted to buy every single other fountain pen then and there <laughs> and it was frustrating for me because living where I live I don't have access to you know like a, a store where I can actually go in and see them and touch them and feel them and um, I have to order my pens online and you know they take forever to get here and I'm impatient at the best of times when I want something and I want to test them and try them um, so yeah and the reason why it began was because I was already exploring at the time a way of improving my handwriting and I sort of got myself some sort of different types of pens you know like you know uh, felt tip pens mainly the art line ones with the different like widths but I didn't quite enjoy the writing experience with those and wasn't quite the ticket and then because I follow Simon um, from the Hermit's Cave channel and he randomly one day just posted a video about his hobbies which one of them is fountain pens and he was showing his collection of fountain pens and guys I was hooked and that was that and I haven't looked back since then I even went ahead and um started this YouTube channel because I was so excited and enthusiastic about sharing this hobby because I know no one and no one in my life is passionate or interested in this so I didn't know you know how to contain my excitement so I had to share it with the world and I thought well what better place uh, is kind of YouTube where everyone kind of you know posts their thing and it then becomes a community where you can share these um these passions or what you're good at and yeah so that's how and that's why. Uh, second question is, what was your fave ink at the start and what are your go-to inks now? Well, my fave ink at the start was the Van Diemen's Leatherwood Honey. And to be quite frank with you all, it's still my favorite ink to this day. Why? I just love the color of it. I love the way it shades and it writes fantastic in whatever pen with whatever nib I use it. Um, I find that the Van Diemen's inks are really good inks. They are they they hold their line, um, no matter what pen you use, and um, and also it's an Australian brand, so I want to support Australian brands as much as I can. It's a small family-run business out of um, Tassie or Tasmania, which is that small little island at the bottom of uh, the state of Victoria in Australia. And um, why do I love it so much? because it shades beautifully 
and that leads me into you know how have your taste changed over time be that with your ink uh, or your pens or with regards to ink I've discovered that I like uh, an ink that shades really well that looks super good on the page when it dries and I like things that are interesting you know a black is great and a blue is great but an ink that can shade and give you different properties and looks good when you when it dries um, attracts me. Uh, I like something that is um, crisp and writes well and it's not too wet and it's not too blobby. And when I say blobby, what I mean that it doesn't kind of like spread out on the page. Not so much feather, but spread out. And I've discovered in my uh, journey so far testing a few different brands and inks that there are some inks that tend to do that you know even on tomorrow river paper they will kind of spread um rather than stay crisp and now it could have to do very much with maybe the nib that i use i do have wider nibs in my collection however i find that for instance with van diemen with um diamine also um, Lamy crystal inks and now the Kyoiro inks that I've discovered no matter what nib I use them in they, they are crisp they shade well and they look really good on the page so that's what I've discovered along the journey with my inks I've also been really good with my inks in the sense that I haven't splurged on many bottles I got burnt at, in the first um few months of my journey because I ended up buying a few bottles and then I didn't really like those inks I thought I would so then I decided okay right Kate so now um, just get the little samples and just use the samples and then if you really 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 like them then you buy the bottle so I've been good that way right from the start <laughs> and so I don't have uh, very many bottles of ink maybe <clears throat> 10 if that or less and one I do have because it came with my salad pro gear as part of a gift set when I ordered that with regards to my pens I've actually come full circle I've actually discovered that I really like my Lamy all stars with a 1.1 nib I really enjoy writing with them I like the tactile feel of those pens I've also discovered moon man that got the uh, s5 which is like a super cheap pen came with three nibs I've used those like I've got the one nib on it and I've used those two others on other pens. I've discovered that I can appreciate finer nibs now. So I am writing with some fine and medium nibs where I started my journey because I was in, into calligraphy mode. I had to have the calligraphy nibs, you know. So I did test the Lamy nibs. I tested the 1.1, the 1.5 nib and the 1.9 nibs. Uh, so I tested all of those and out of those three, my go-to is 1.1. And then I've tried a couple of stub nibs in different brands. Some of them are quite huge. Um, for instance, in my Twisby Mini, I've got a 1.1, which writes super well, but that's because it's a size 4 nib. But then in my Twisby 580 Iris, I've got a stub nib, but that is, writes a little bit broader because it is a bigger nib. I think it is a size 6 nib, but don't quote me on that. I'm not entirely sure if it is could be a size five don't know but anyway and then I have discovered that I can write really well with a fine nib when it is a size six nib so I've kind of appreciating different nibs I'm someone who loves to play around with nib sizes I have I buy pens and then I buy nibs and swap them out and you know so lots of fun lots of experimenting so this is how kind of in time my pen tastes have changed and also my ink discoveries Okay, so question number four, uh, are there inks and pens you have yet to try or that you would like to try? Oh yeah, I wanna try everything. <laughs> I wanna try everything. Um, Ink-wise, I have experimented with a lot of different ink brands. Um, I think there's a few that are yet to try, but one of them is Tatcha. I'd like to try some of their inks. Um, I'd like to try some of their, the Pelican Adelstein or Adelstein inks. What else is there? I'm really into these Kyo Eero inks though. And, and now I want to experiment with the Kyo no Oto ones, which I've got two of, but the other ones are all sold out on um, the Desk Bandit. So I'll have to wait for them to restock to get them all. 
So this is my leather wood honey ink, which I absolutely, absolutely adore. I just love how it shades. And then I have started a dedicated page to my Kiro Iro and my Kiro no Oto inks. I just also love the names of them. So I've got the Soft Snow of Ohara. I have Stone Road. It says to Gion, but it's actually Stone Road of Gion. Moonlight of Higashama or Higashiyama. And these ones here are a Kiono Oto ink. So that's number seven, Husoku, which is a great blue, greeny, greeny blue shade. And then I've got the black one, which is the number one, which is Raven Wing. And it actually sheens on a bigger ink sample, just like a wing of a raven in the sunlight with that bluey black sheen to it. And there you have it. All right, so the pens that I want to try, and there are heaps, there are so many, but the ones that I'd really, really like to sort of test out and try, which would be super nice to get my hands on something and just actually write with it, um, definitely a Pelican Sovereign. Um, I love the tortoiseshell white one. It's a beautiful pen. Um, Visconti Homo Sapiens. It's another pen that I'd really like to try out. Um, Putnam. 3776 century uh, specifically I'm loving the look of the celluloid calico which is kind of like a tortoiseshell brown um, gold honey gold color with gold trim I love that pen but it's way out of my price range and also I'd love to try a maquille be it a platinum or be it pilot or be it a sailor I just love to try one of them pens they're gorgeous and I re really really want a maquille pen in my uh, fountain pen collection um, another one that I'd really love to try is the Estebrook Esti um, especially with um, their custom grinds is one by Gina Salonino that I can find but again a bit out of my price range these pens that I'm talking about they're all over 400 Australian dollars and you know, that's a bit too much for me to spend on a pen, especially now that I'm trying to be good. I can't spend any more money <laughs> on pens, but unless they're a real super cheap pen. And then I got an email with a newsletter from Cult Pens, which is this pen retailer um, in the UK. And they had a photo of these beautiful fountain pens from Turkey. But they were saying in the newsletter that they totally sold out of them. And I can't for the life of me remember the brand of it. And I went looking on their website before, but I just can't find them. So I don't know what the brand and the name is, but they're gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. And they did say in the letter that they didn't get enough of them. And I didn't, they didn't think that they were going to sell out of them. So I think they're going to restock. So hopefully, but again, you know, 400 Australian dollars. So, mm. And then what's the next question? Oh, so that leads us in obviously into number five. What's your Holy Grail pen? Well, that keeps changing. <laughs> and one day it's the Pelican um, Tortoiseshell White. One day it's a wonderful Maquille uh, pen from Platinum or Pilot that costs thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, you know, one day it can be the whole fountain pen, uh, limited edition of the Safari. So, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So, let's narrow it down. So, it is the Visconti Homo Sapiens just because they're so expensive. And this one is called the Tuscan Hills. And it's a beautiful looking pen. And it's got a green barrel with swirly whirlies on it. And I have to have it, or I want it. I covered it because I lived in Italy for many, many years in Tuscany. And I cannot not have a pen called Tuscan Hills. And also I have no pens in my collection that are an Italian pen. So watch this space. I'm going to Italy in June. Who knows what I'll come back with. <laughs> okay, number six. How many pens do you currently own? So I think I have about 20 pens in my collection. Uh, two of them I have, but I'm going to gift them. Um, so I kind of don't count those. And then a couple of them I don't really reach for. So like my Pelican Twist, I don't reach for and I don't have inked. And also my Platinum Plaisir, I don't reach for that. Um, so I kind of don't really figure them in 
my collection but yeah let's say about 20 20 fountain pens and that's fine and I mean I'm not saying it's not going to go but for now I sort of got the ones that I wanted to get and I kind of want to appreciate them and then we'll see how we go um number seven okay so that kind of flows into this question here do you have a limit on pens or inks in your collection um is it a number is it a feeling uh when do you know uh, that you have reached your max well as i was saying at the moment i don't have money to invest in buying more fountain pens there's definitely room for more there's definitely not going to be a limit on the amount of pens i have it's just to me not a number it's a feeling so i become more savvy in my fountain pen journey as you go along and as you get to sort of understand and appreciate what you like and what you don't like and now instead of coming from that mentality of oh gosh i have to have all them caveco um, special editions or i all have to have the lamy special editions and you know that collector's mentality that you have to have them all i'm more about what do I love looking at and holding in my hand and what do I love writing with and what do I tend to reach for you know uh, and at the moment I reach for my Lamy All-Stars I write with them I write really well they journal well um, I really appreciate them you know and then another pen that I reach for all the time is my Brown Orchid I mean this is a stunning writer and I love the look of it and the feel of it and I just love writing with it so you know like it's not the most expensive pen sometimes that is the one that you write with the most even with this gold nib thing you know i was coveting a pen with a gold nib and i eventually got my hands on a, a sailor pro gear slim the medium and yeah great it writes greatly but doesn't write any better or any worse than any of the steel nibs i have <laughs> and to be honest it's not one that i reach for all the time uh, I maybe might reach for my Pilot Pro with a, the calligraphy medium nib on it or my Pilot Matte with a calligraphy medium. Why? Because I enjoy writing with a calligraphy medium more than I do with the gold medium nib. Yeah. And it's also a question of wow factor. You know, I want something that I like looking at, that I like holding, that I like. Definitely not a number. Definitely more of a feeling. And definitely it's based also on my funds, uh, availability. I'm also don't want to be spending all this money on stuff that then they're just going to lie there and I'm not going to be using them. So I have to be a little bit more savvy in, in how I want to approach uh, my collection. And with inks, well, my rule of thumb is, you know, don't buy bottles now. Only buy bottles if you really, 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 really love that ink and you want a continuous supply of it uh, and that you might know that, for instance, it might be discontinued or it might be a special edition or something like that so you can have it. Otherwise, I just want to try different colours as I'm not someone that likes to have the same colours um, in my pen constantly. I get a bit bored. The only ones that I always have are, you know, my Leatherwood Honey because I absolutely love it. And now I've discovered the Kyo Iro inks, which I absolutely adore. So they will probably be permanent ones. That I will be keeping in pens but other than that I like to experiment so you know bring on ink samples and that leads us into question eight consequently what would we do if another pen ink came along well if I really 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 love the pen and I really 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 want that pen I will really 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 get that pen and with inks yeah bring it on I don't really have that many samples I've got my little ink sample boxy here so you know realistically Lamy, my Lamy collection of um, Lamy crystals are in there, you know, and I've got some Ferris wheel press charges in here. So realistically, that's that's not many many samples. This is my ink box, and that's my bottled ink collection. I've got a few cartridge inks as well. That's just because you know when you buy pens, they always send you a spare cartridge. Or alternatively, I did buy a couple of um, packs when I first started just to have some cartridges in my collection, but I, because I didn't really know about bottled inks and that rabbit hole <laughs> yet. And there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching, liking and subscribing to my channel and being part of my fountain pen journey. Thank you so much for to Leanne Likes and to Simone or Simona for initiating this tag. It's been super fun to answer these questions and 
till my next one. Ciao, Ellie.